the one hit KO, the dream scenario every time you choose an attacking move in battle, and yet one hit KO moves are one of the most hotly debated topics in the history of the Pokemon franchise. So when I took on a challenge to beat the entire game of Pokemon Yellow with only one hit KO moves, I'm sure plenty of people rolled their eyes like, oh uh, yeah, he's gonna win that one eventually, there's no strategy involved, it's just luck based, right? Well, there's actually a lot more going on here than you might initially think. In fact, this run might be completely impossible. Here's the reason why. In Gen 1 of Pokemon, one hit KO moves rely on a lot of important factors. The first is that we need a Pokemon that can learn both Fissure and Horn Drill. That's not a lot of Pokemon to begin with. But then we have another factor to deal with. We can only hit our opponent with one hit KO moves in Gen 1 if we outspeed them. That means Pokemon like Rhydon, Nidoqueen, and Nidoking are automatically out. They don't outspeed enough opponents in the late game to actually make this work. So that leaves Tauros and Mew. And if we add on the extra stipulation of minimum battles, meaning we can't just grind up levels until we beat our opponents, Tauros is also not viable here, because Tauros is in the slow level up group. That means Mew is basically the only Pokemon that this could even be possible with if we don't use any attacking moves other than one hit KO moves. This could be an impossible run. But there's only one way to find out, so let's get into this one. And first, we gotta break down a few ground rules. I'm only allowed to attack my opponents with one hit KO moves in battle. I am allowed to use other status moves or moves that might have some effect on Mew. For example, if I suddenly raise my speed somehow, that's perfectly fine. As with any other solo run on this channel, we never use items in battle and we're going to be running on zero DVs, meaning that we're going to have the slowest possible Mew with the least amount of defense and HP to go along with it. On top of that, we are not going to use any other Pokemon in battle, no switching out, no nonsense like that. And last but not least, no struggle. If we run out of PP, we just have to reset right there. So go ahead and place your predictions now in the comment section, guys. Do you think this is gonna take 500 resets? Do you think this is gonna be just a completely ridiculous run that's impossible? Let me know. But let's get into this and find out if a single Mew with only one Hikeo moves can beat the entire game of Pokemon Yellow on zero DVs and minimum battles. Let's get into it. Now we just have to get our Mew. <laughs> of course, the rules are pretty much the same as usual as Professor Oak. He just chucks that Pokeball. He's like, I got a Mew. Another day at the office. Gonna give it to some little kid. Um... Of course, we're not gonna use items in battle, so no, I'm not gonna be using X accuracies in order to guarantee that my one hit KO moves hit. That would be stupid. Um, but that is how you speed run. That's, that's how we would actually speed run the game. That's right, we're running KO Kitty today. Oh my God. Let's just see, oh my gosh. And my system only labels it as K. No, it can't handle the period. Rip. But here we are. We have KO Kitty. We start with 16 attack, 15 defense, 16 speed, 16 sp or 15 special. Very typical of a Mew. And we've started out with Horn Drill and Fissure. And we've got 35 PP in Horn Drill. Don't worry, that will reset automatically after this fight. But we have to start by finding out, do we outspeed Rival 1? I think we do. But on zero DVs, I'm not sure that we do. Okay, he's using Tail Whip, and there we go. We land the one hit KO. So we get through Rival 1, and we get to level 6. That's perfect. So when it comes to the luck-based aspect of this run, of course, our odds of knocking out an opponent depend on how many turns we have to use one hit KO moves. If we have to knock out one enemy Pokemon, yeah, in one turn, it's a 30% chance. But if we have two turns, we're already over 50%. By the time we use all five PP on one of our one hit KO moves, we're up to 83%. And if we ever used all of our available PP with these two moves on our moveset, we would be a whopping 97% to knock out a single opponent. So really the challenge is gonna come when we get to two opponents that have more than one Pokemon. But there are also some other factors that we have to keep in mind. Now this is our first real big challenge. We are going to be four levels lower than this Caterpie that we're about to fight. 
And this Caterpie knows String Shot. If it hits us with String Shot and lowers our speed, I guarantee we lose. But we might lose right out the gate if we can't outspeed here. Let's find out. Okay, we do outspeed. And good, he doesn't use String Shot, so we get through the Bug Catcher. <laughs> oh, this is stupid. So speed is obviously going to be important in this one, even though it didn't end up mattering there. But now we have an even bigger challenge. Brock is the first trainer that has two Pokemon, and the odds of knocking out two Pokemon with one hit KO moves are way lower than the odds of taking out one Pokemon. In fact, we have to have six turns just to get over 50%, and even with all 10 PP, we still have a 15% chance of not knocking them out. So let's see how this goes. Okay, oh, we land the fissure immediately. <laughs> okay, let's see. So we are in a speed tie right now. So we are, I think, just hoping and praying to land the hit. Oh, we got the one hit KO. There we go. Brock goes down. <laughs> oh, this is stupid. Oh, we took down the first gym, guys. No resets. Brock kind of did us a favor by using Bide there, but... <laughs> <laughs> now we have to move on to this next section of the game, and I'm not sure if we outspeed all these Pokemon. This bug catcher has three bugs that could use String Shot on us, and that would effectively end this run. Oh, and we get poisoned. No! No! Hit! Hit! Darn you, hit! Oh, and that's the end of it right there. We are out of pp we cannot struggle no 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 we have to legitimately knock these pokemon out with one hit ko moves okay here we still out speed after one string shot so we actually got through that one okay so one reset there the more pokemon an opponent has the harder this is going to be obviously now the odds of winning any fight really comes down to how many enemy Pokemon we have to knock out with these one hit KO moves. When we're dealing with three or fewer Pokemon, we're actually favored even with just 10 PP. We haven't used any PP ups yet. But if we get over four Pokemon, it just absolutely falls off a cliff. We're only 35% to beat four Pokemon and we're all the way down under 5% to beat six Pokemon which means the late game is going to be absolutely terrible in this one. We're going to have to find ways to make this more manageable. Now that most trainers are starting to have three or more Pokemon, we're going to start taking a lot of resets in this next section. So here we are, super nerd time. And we've got to land. He disabled Fissure. Okay, and we one shot there. No, we ran out of PP. Or we didn't run out of PP. We couldn't use Fissure because it was disabled. Okay, there we get the one hitter. And we do outspeed here, so it's just purely a matter of hitting. Okay, there we go. And there we go. Oh, we take him down. This is just going to gradually get harder and harder. Now, like I said, I'm allowed to use any other moves that don't deal damage. This is very important, okay? I can use status moves. I can use something like soft boiled when I get there to, to heal up my Mew in battle. I just can only damage them with one hit KO moves. That's the important point. So struggle is out because it deals damage, right? But I can set up things like reflect, substitute, double team if I get to the point of doing that. Um, anything else is fine, but I can also use some statuses on them. That will be important, I think, here in just a minute. Here, we need to land a hit, though. No. Okay, we do outspeed. Oh, and we get through Team Rocket on the first attempt. That's stupid. <laughs> oh, my God. This is just so ridiculous. <laughs> okay. So now, what do we outspeed? Do we outspeed the Golding? That is the question. Let's see if we outspeed Golding here. Oh, we do. <laughs> I want to fight that trainer first. I will not outspeed Starmie at this point. I know that for a fact. 
but as long as I outspeed Goldeen, I can get some extra XP there. And now we have to try to take on rival number two. I think we outspeed everything here, but we he's got four Pokemon. We've got to land four one-hit KOs in this in order to get through, which is bad. Okay, we get one. Oh, we get two. Oh, we get three. Come on. Oh, there's the fourth one, and we take down VGC. <laughs> Competitive Pokemon has no chance against HM, or not HM Mule, against KO Kitty. KO Kitty, the ultimate Pokemon. Now, we do have to be careful here, because this is the first section where we're going to start to get flying types. And flying types mean that we can only use Horn Drill. We can't use Fissure on them. So we've got to save our Horn Drill PP. And we missed every single Horn Drill. So that's a reset. We cannot progress in the fight because Horn Drill missed Pidgey too many times. Okay. But now we did get through to Nidoran, and there we go. We take that one down, we get to level 20. Nice. We get through that one. But now I'm going to get my first TM move that I'm going to intentionally learn. This isn't like a no TMs run. I'm learning Thunder Wave very intentionally here. Thunder Wave is going to be a key, I think, in this one, because it's going to allow me to paralyze opponents, which cuts their speed to one quarter of its normal amount. And that may allow us to even horn drill some really fast opponents. At this point, we might just be fast enough to take on Misty. I really want to try this. Let's just try Misty one time. There she is. Look at her in all her glory, sending out her Starmie. Misty is going to be tough because Starmie is really fast. Like it's boomeranging around in the air. So let's try this. We outspeed Star you already, so nothing special to do here. Just hope for a hit. Come on. Okay, we got the hit there finally. Now we want to Thunder Wave on Starmie. And we ran out of PP. Okay. Let's try this again. And it's worth noting that Bubble Beam could result in us being too slow so we definitely need to hit her starmie with a thunder wave first okay our speed fell but we're still faster and there we go yes yes <laughs> we got it we took her down <laughs> misty get wrecked ko kitty is here Oh my god, KO Kitty is here. Gen 1 is all about speed when it comes to these one-hit KO moves. It's the, if your opponent's faster, you can't hit them. But that's why Paralysis with one-hit KO moves is such a great combination. This is the only case where I actually like Paralysis status more than something like Sleep or, or Poison is when it comes to one-hit KO moves because it's, it's the cheat code. It's what makes the one-hit KO move like super, super good. So let's get into Oddish Lass here. Let's see how this goes. Oh, we just horn drilled that one. Oh, we just horn drilled that one. Come on. Oh, we didn't get the clean sweep. That's too bad. But we've got five PP. There we go. We take him down. So we'll pick up an ether. We'll save Billy Boy from his Pokemon experimentation. See, he, he's not doing anything half as crazy as what I'm doing right now. But uh, we got to keep in mind, in the late game, we're going to have opponents that have five, six Pokemon on their team. And it's going to take a lot of luck in order to land all the hits, I think. Now we can get down here, get the full restore, and let's get on down here to Pidgey Girl. Pidgey Girl is going to be hard because we can only use um, Whatchamacall. We can only use Horn Drill in this. We have to land three out of five Horn Drills. And she used Sand Attack. And that's all she wrote for that one. We didn't have enough PP. Okay, that's one. That's two. We have to land this one. No, we didn't land it. Rip. Okay. Oh, we got the sand attack too, so that one's just done. Okay, that's one. That's two. 
Come on. I believe in you. Yes. Yes. KO Kitty does it. KO Kitty for the win. <laughs> oh, God. This is stupid, stupid. Well, Ravel three time. We've got full PP. We need to save Horn Drill, or we have to just use Horn Drill out the gate on Spiro. He's got four Pokemon, so this is kind of hard. Let's see how this goes. Can we land the hit? Can we land the hit? Oh, we got the hit. Okay, now Fissure has to hit three out of five times. And we lost. That That's the trouble. We've only got 10 PP with a 30% chance to hit each time. And we used all five there on the Spiro, all five horn drills, and we couldn't land the hit. Oh, but there we get the turn one hit, perfect. Oh, there's another hit. Oh, there's another hit, come on. Oh, and we landed the fissure even after a sand attack. That is amazing, absolutely incredible. Oh, that's not have to deal with that. I mean, Lieutenant Surge in the anime, this guy was a beast, actually. Like, his Raichu was body slamming Pikachu all over the place and just wrecking it and mega punching and mega kicking it. Oh, my God. But it's okay. We... We're better than this. Okay. So here, now I'm going to use Thunder Wave now that he X-speeded. Oh my god, he did so much damage. He knocked us out legitimately. That's stupid. Okay. Oh, and we land the fissure and we win. <laughs> I mean, we can just do that. Just paralyze him and just immediately knock him out. So, uh, yeah, it's a strategy. Clearly. But clearly, we're not getting through that fight without the Thunder Wave because he outspeeds us. It's the same for the Starmie. We wouldn't have gotten through Starmie without Thunder Wave. Uh, Thunder Wave is the move here. But so here, let's get into the wrapping lass. Oh my god, I didn't recover PP. Yeah, and if I don't land every single hit, I'm just not going to win. So let's go ahead and heal up. And yeah, the problem here with Wrapping Lass is the fact that she has four Pokemon. We've just seen the more Pokemon they have, the harder this gets, basically. And if we get paralyzed, it will be really bad. So, okay, here we get put to sleep. We don't mind growth. Growth doesn't matter. Sleep powder sucks, though. Come on. Okay, there we landed the hit. Oh, the stun spore. Oh, and I used Mega Punch by mistake. Rip. Okay, now we get stun spored, which is very bad. It's not the end of the world because we can also paralyze them. And then that way we can get the speed that we need. But you know what? Ah, oh, that's the glitch. When you're paralyzed and your opponent uses a stat altering move, something like uh, growth, it actually reapplies the effect of paralysis again on your speed so you get even slower. So if we get paralyzed and then Bellsprout starts using growth, we'll actually be outsped. We really need to avoid that. Okay, poison powder's good. Poison powder is very good because now we cannot be paralyzed. So now we just need to land a hit. Come on. Come on. No, he's wrapping me. No, wrapping last. Don't do it. Oh, there we go. Yes. I mean, this isn't great, but it's pretty funny. <laughs> We're almost halfway through the battles in the game. So how many resets do we have right now? We're up to 22 resets. But still it's it's really not that bad it's not as bad as you might be thinking let's just find out if we can beat this rock tunnel hiker um it's not gonna be easy that's for sure but he can self-destruct and if he doesn't if if we don't get knocked out by his self-destruct i mean that's that's a win guys 
because we can't control what he does. I'm just saying we can't damage him with anything other than our one hit KO move. Okay, we take the first one down. Come on. Yes. This is the only spot where I think we don't have to immediately reset because he could self-destruct, but now he's definitely going to knock us out. Okay. So let's try again. We don't really mind defense curl because it doesn't affect anything. We're still either going to land the one hitter or not. Okay, come on. Come on, KO Kitty. Oh, yes. We get it. Up to level 29 too. I mean, we're getting decent speed at this point. We're up to what? What is that? 67 speed. We should outspeed everything except Kadabra on Rival 5's team at this point. So there we go. We have gotten through that section. I'm going to go to Celadon first. I want to get the PP up that's available in Celadon. That's my game plan. The importance of PP ups here is impossible to overstate. We massively improve our odds by just having two additional PP, going all the way up to 50% on four Pokemon, and we've basically doubled our chances against five Pokemon and tripled our chances against six Pokemon. We're now at worst 11.7% to take out six Pokemon, assuming we can get all the hits off, which isn't guaranteed. Let's test this on Erica. So here is Erica from the anime with her Tangela. You know, they're all like, look how pretty she is. <laughs> and her Tangela is such a terrible Pokemon, except it isn't, as long as it's a Gen 2 trade back. So here, Horn Drill, yes. We could learn Metronome. I'll learn Metronome over Mega Punch. It gives us a chance to maybe use a one hit KO move by accident. Okay, we one hit there. And we won't hit there. Yes, we get through Erica on the first attempt. That's stupid. Oh my God. I mean, we're already up to 71 speed. This is ridiculous, guys. Like, it's going to come crashing down at some point, I'm sure. But right now, we're doing very well. 25 resets isn't great, but it's not bad. It's really not bad considering what we're up against here. Considering that a lot of these resets are just, oops, I ran out of PP. So, we can go ahead and finish that fight. We can move on. We can get, after pressing this little poster button, we can get another PP up down here. So, I'm going to go ahead and just drop this one into Horn Drill. So, here, let's get into this fight. Let's find out. Oh, Fissure, yes. Come on, come on, land. Yes, there's the second Fissure. Now we're gonna change to Horn Drill to try to take down this Ekans. One more attempt. Oh, and we get it on the last PP, yes. <laughs> oh, we're out of PP in our attacking moves, but it doesn't matter because we took him down. Take it. Time for Giovanni. Giovanni, let's go, buddy. I'm going to try to land Fissure on you. Yes, there we go. Let's try to Fissure this one. And now Persian. He's faster than us, it looks like. So I'm going to have to Thunder Wave the Persian. And now land the Fissure. There we go. Giovanni, your own move being used against you. <laughs> you didn't know I knew Fissure, did you? And now we have to go to the Pokemon Tower. So let's just get in here. We have to fight Rival 5, or sorry, Rival 4. And uh, we have to take out five Pokemon here. So we have to lead off with Horn Drill against this Spearow. And fortunately, Horn Drill will always miss us because we outspeed, but we ran out of PP there. You know, we've got 12 PP to take out five Pokemon. Okay, we landed the hit there. That's good. Come on. Oh, and now we can't win. We're out of... We're too low on PP. Okay. Like, the bigger these teams get, the harder this is gonna get. 
Okay, we landed the hit there. We got the hit there. We still have six PP to take out two Pokemon, but we get sand attacked. Okay, we've got three PP to try to take out this. Oh, and we get another sand attack. No, Eevee, no. <laughs> sand attack ruins the run. Seriously. Like this strategy against one or two Pokemon is really not a big deal. It's when you get these really big teams and you have to sweep them with one hit KO moves that this becomes hard. He missed Sand Attack, which is nice. We've got three PP again on the Eevee. And there we go. We finally land the hit. So 42 resets, but we have managed to get through Rival 4. And Rival 5 is basically going to be the same thing. It's just a matter of can we land the hits within our PP. So here we go. Team Rocket time. First things first, let's try to land hits. Okay, we take down Meowth. Oh, we get paralyzed. So we have to paralyze the Arbok to have a shot here. Okay. Oh, and because of stat changes, he outspeeds us. Rip. Ah, oh, man. We need no stat changes after we get paralyzed. Okay, we fissure and take that one down. As a kid, I thought if I used a super effective move, it would have higher accuracy or something. It doesn't, but we fissure down the wheezing. And there we go. We have gotten through Team Rocket at the top of the Lavender Tower. So now, but this is where I get scared. We want to take on Rival 5. And I've got 11 PP to take down five Pokemon. Now, I think I'm going to hold off for just a second because we can get one more PP up over here on our way down to Fuchsia. So let's Adding the third PP up in this run is absolutely massive because it means that we now have effectively a one in three chance of beating a five Pokemon team provided we can get off all 13 hits. But that's gonna be massive when we come up against Rival 5, when we come up against Giovanni's Gym. But for now, we should take on Koga first. He's only got four Pokemon. We should outspeed everything except Venomoth. But let's see how the trainers in his gym go. That's all she wrote. Okay, we knocked that one out. Knocked that one out. Come on, take out Kadabra. Yes, okay. We've got seven PP and there we go. We take down the drowsy. So just big teams, guys, big teams. That's what we're scared of. That's what the late game is going to be. So the late game is going to be a nightmare. <laughs> but at this point, we're doing better than HM Mule. So there is that. Let's take on this juggler. Okay, we one shot the Hypno. We just need to take down this drowsy. There we go. We took him down. And now technically we should take on Koga first um, because Koga only has four Pokemon as opposed to five Pokemon for the rival five. So this is technically the easier fight. Let's just see though. So we got Koga from the anime where he evolves his Venonat into a Venomoth in the middle of battle and then just proceeds to completely destroy Pidgeotto. Ash, you had the right idea with Pidgeotto, but you got wrecked. So there we get a one shot, but we get toxic, but now we land the one hitter. Okay, now we gotta land the one hitter here. And we get wrecked by toxic and double edge. Okay, we get all the way to Venomoth, but we don't have any PP left. And Venomoth is going to use leech life every time because Smart AI, <laughs> basically. Smart AI. Why does why does he do anything? Smart AI. Okay, we horn drill that one down. Horn drill that one down. Okay, we get put to sleep here. And Double Edge is doing so much damage. Okay, but we do horn drill that one down. We survive with 2 HP... Fissure? Yes! Yes! We got him! 
<laughs> we got him. We just destroyed Koga. 55 resets, but I will take it. Take it, take it. We've had much worse runs than this. And I mean, we're just, this is so stupid. But it's my favorite combo of just like stupid moves is the Thunder Wave plus one hit KO move. Or in the case of like a Needle Queen Body Slam plus uh, one hit KO move. The only reason that we can't use Needle Queen is because Body Slam would deal damage. But otherwise, Needle Queen is actually really great for this sort of run because she starts with Body Slam and with Body Slam, we can have a 30% chance to paralyze and then just finish things off in style with the one hit KO move. So, and now it's time to go back up to Saffron. If we can take down Rival 5, we can get Lapras and uh, we can even go get another PP up in the, in the power plant. Okay, but first let's take on Rival 5. This is gonna be hard, but he doesn't have any flying types anymore. So that's the advantage that we have. And we have a badge boost in speed, so we should outspeed everything here. Just no sand attack, please. Please God, no sand attack. Okay. We take that one down. We take that one down. We take that one down. Can we land the hit? Oh, he sand attacked me. You jerk. No. Oh, we were all the way to the Flareon. Oh, man. No sand attack. Please. God, no sand attack. Okay. Come on, Fissure. Yes. Fissure. Yes. Fissure. There we go. We get through rival five on the second attempt. Oh, that was so lucky, but that was so good. So here we've got Lapras now. We can go ahead and teach Lapras to surf. Gonna just do that now. And I am going to dig out of here. And uh, I'm going to go to the power plant. Because at this point, this is more about PP ups than anything else. Adding a fourth PP up, we now have enough PP that if we can get off all the hits, we're actually a pretty decent favorite against a four Pokemon team. We're up to 40% against five Pokemon teams and we're one in five to beat a six Pokemon team. And if we just had a move like soft boiled, this will probably work out. Now I didn't get soft boiled initially. I went back to Silphco. It was definitely a small inaccuracy on my part, but let's see how it went. And even with eight attempts, are we going to miss them all? Oh my God, we missed them all. <sighs> Come on. Okay, there's the one hitter. There's the one hitter. Now we just need to land. There we go. So here, I'm just gonna pop an ether into horn drill. And uh, who cares? Full restore because I don't want to heal up. And let's take on Giovanni. Four Pokemon. Let's see how this goes. It shouldn't matter which move we use. We just need to land the four hits. I'll learn Psychic, but then I'm never going to use it. A okay, Fissure. Yes. Come on, Fissure. 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 Yes. And now we have three for Needle Queen, and we get through. There we go. All right. <laughs> so 57 resets to get through the Rocket storyline. Um, and now we have to make some decisions of, do we fight, uh, Sabrina? Do we go fight Blaine? The issue is that Sabrina is going to be a troll, like really, really going to be a troll because she uses moves that lower our accuracy with Kinesis and Flash. Um, so I actually think that Blaine's going to be the easier fight. Even though his Pokemon are technically stronger in a lot of ways. Um, he attacks randomly. And this might just come down to uh, getting some badge boosts from him unintentionally. Because he can use uh, Tail Whip and Growl on us and 
we don't care, right? Tail Whip and Growl have no effect on our strategy because our strategy is a one-hit KO or nothing strategy. So, so there's one more thing that I'm going to do before this. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to add one more TM in this run, which is Soft Boiled. Soft Boiled because then KO Kitty can heal in battle. And uh, in some cases, that might be exactly what we need to have a shot. So here now, let's get into Blaney Boy's gym. Let's get into this fight with Blaine. I think we're outsped by everything here, but one badge boost I think is all we need. Let's just find out. So there is Blaney Boy. In the anime, he uses Magmar. He doesn't even use any of the Pokemon in his team. Actually, he does use Ninetales in the anime, but uh, that's it. Never uses the Arcanine, but it does use Fire Blast in the anime. So there is that. Here, I'm just going to Thunder Wave and now go for Fissure Perfect. Oh, and we got the badge boost. So now it might not even matter. Okay, we just need to land a hit. And he is badge boosting us. So now I think, yes, we outspeed Arcanine and we land the hit. So there we go. We get through Blaine on the first attempt. There we go. Very nice. So now let's go and try to take on Sabrina. We, we have to fight her on minimum battles. There's nothing else to do. It's Sabrina, then it's on to Giovanni's Gym, and then it's on to the Elite Four, which is going to be a nightmare in this one, but, you know, we'll, we'll take it as it comes, guys. So here we go. We're up against Sabrina, and, uh, yeah. Sabrina in the anime was super creepy with that, like, little girl doll. Like, play with me. She's just, like, ragdolling Pikachu around. <laughs> like... Oh, man. So here, do we outspeed? Yes. Okay. Oh, but we got flashed anyway. The game plan here is just to try to land the hit as quickly as possible there on the... Uh, whatchamacall. Now, do we outspeed? We do. So it's just a matter of luck trying to get the hit and we don't get it so yeah we outspeed the first abra which means in theory we can just do that and now we can thunder wave there okay we've taken one kinesis but we're gonna thunder wave here so that we outspeed and now we're just hoping to hit there we go we get through sabrina on the second attempt nice 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 oh we are making so much progress guys Oh, we haven't even used soft boiled in battle, but this might change when we get here to this next one. Here's the problem. We cannot thunder wave on this. Oh, we can't thunder wave on Doug Trio. Oh, this is going to be bad. We're going we're going to have to go double team, I think. But here I mean we might have to go for rare candies to see if we can get fast enough to outspeed the Doug Trio. Okay. Because we've got 112 speed right now. Because if we can't outspeed the Doug Trio, then we're going to be in really bad shape because we can't use the one hit KO move if uh, we don't outspeed. And that's his first Pokemon too. I mean, he can sand attack us, which would give us a badge boost, but ah, uh, this is gonna be bad. Okay, let's just see. I need to see Dugtrio's speed. It's 133. With 10 levels would we get 133 speed that is the question see in there he just fissures us 
So if we don't get to 133 or higher um, after using our 10 rare candies here, then we're going to have to go double team. That's going to be the only possible way. Oh, but we can get level 52. We've got enough speed. Yes. Okay. We have a shot. We have a shot. We don't have to go double team. Okay. We just need to land the hit now. Okay. We fissure that one. Now he goes double team the jerk. No. We couldn't land the hit. Okay. Let's try this again. Okay. We fissure that one. This is a speed tie, so I'm actually going to Thunder Wave him. Oh, and here we need to land the hit. Okay, Soft Boiled. Soft Boiled. Let's just heal up. Okay, we take down Nido Queen. We take down Nido King. We've got three PP to take down. Yes! There we go. We take down Rhydon. Oh, my God. Yes. Second attempt. After we get the, enough speed, we got it. Oh, my God. When we level up to level 53, we've still got a rare candy in the bag. Oh, this is going to be stupid, guys. If we manage to get through this without having to go double team, I'm going to be shocked. I'm going to be truly shocked. I will buy a double team before I take on the Elite Four, just because um, we got to have it just in case. But... Yeah, let's get into Rival 6 now. This is going to be hard. He's got, like, all the Pokemon here. His team is, like, fully 6 Pokemon now. So, okay. Okay. we still got 8. We've got 7 PP to take down this Flareon. Yes! Yes, we get through! <laughs> we get through the... Rival 6 on the first attempt. Are you kidding me? Oh my god. KO Kitty, you are amazing. Oh, this is about to come to a crashing halt. I'm sure of it. The the Elite Four is just going to be so terrible. Unless we get godlike luck. <laughs> but we are finding out that it might just be possible to beat the entire game of Pokemon Yellow. With only one hit KO moves, provided that you have access to Thunder Wave. And that's pretty incredible. When you think about it, right? Like, just having Thunder Wave might be all that we needed to make this possible. I mean, it was really close here. Tauros wouldn't get enough speed because Tauros would be in the solo level up group wouldn't be anywhere near this level at this point. Which is why I vetoed Tauros early on. Of course, Rhydon. Rhydon's way too slow. It's not going to get enough speed. Um, plus, it's in the slow level up group. But even like Nidoking, Nidoqueen, they're in the same level up group as Mew, but they have lower speed. So they wouldn't have had enough speed to outspeed that Doug Trio without going double team there. And uh, yeah, that... Like, seriously, if we do this without broken TMs, I'm just going to lose my mind. Because we're way better than HM Mule at this point. Like, way better. Okay, well, it's time to save and it's time to take on Lorelei, guys. Sorry, I don't have any intro videos for these, uh, or little intro clips for these Elite Four members yet. They are coming. But in the anime, there are, like, different names, right? Like, uh... What, Lorelai is Prima in the anime? Banned episode? You know, the good stuff. But there we go. Fissure. Okay, Fissure works there. Here, I'm going to go ahead and use Soft Boiled while she's using Withdraw here. Come on. Okay, Horn Drill landed. Oh, we got the lovely kiss. Oh, but Fissure lands? Okay. And Fissure lands. We take out Lorelei on the first attempt. Yes. Okay, now we gotta save here. And this is one where we absolutely have to use the elixirs because we're just gonna run out of PP otherwise. So 
So here, let's get into the brutal fight. Where I think, again, we just go for fissure over and over again. Okay. Yes. 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 Come on, take down the Machamp. Yes. Oh, with fissure, we were able to take them all down. We don't even have to do a elixir. We can just use an ether on fissure. Nice. Okay, now it's Agatha time. Agatha's got fast Pokemon. And on top of that, we can only hit the ghosts with fissure. She's got three ghosts and we've only got the eight PP to take them down. Let's see how this one goes. So here, yes, we do outspeed. So I'm going for fissure right away. Okay, we got the fissure. Now, Golbat, we have to horn drill Golbat. Because it's a flying type. So, this is the only one that we have to horn drill on. We can fissure there. I'm going horn drill there. Fissure? Yes! Oh, we got through Agatha on the first attempt. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. Okay, we still got two rare candies in the bag. I think we're going to be outsped by Aerodactyl, so we're going to have to Thunder Wave on Aerodactyl. The rest of the team, though, I think we can just go for the one-hit KO moves and get through. Maybe? Okay, we land the one-hitter there. Oh, we get Thunder Wave. No. Okay, we, we lost to Lance. We didn't get Lance on the first attempt. That's too bad. Let's try this again. Come on, Horn Drill. Okay. Because he used... Um, Hyper Beam, that's why I decided to go ahead and go for that. Now, the other issue here is that we have to knock out all of these Pokemon within the PP that we've got, right? Oh, and we get a critical hit Hyper Beam. But that means three of his Pokemon can only be hit by Horn Attack. Or, sorry, Horn Drill. So this Gyarados, we have to Horn Drill it. Here we can go Fissure on the two Dragonairs. We're hoping not to have to use the rest of our PP here. Okay, we'll Soft Boiled again there. Okay, Fissure, good. Come on, we want to land a fissure here as well. There we go. Okay. Now we need the thunder wave and we need the horn drill. We've got four horn drills and we need them to take out these last two Pokemon. Oh, and we missed. And fissure doesn't affect. So <sighs> we were all the way to Dragonite. We just needed to land the hit. Come on. Okay, we take that one down. Fissure. Yes. Here, I have to go soft boiled on such low health. Okay, but Fissure lands. Okay. Now, we need to Thunder Wave against this Aerodactyl. Okay, Horn Drill lands. Horn Drill lands. There we go. We get through Lance. 67 resets. This is not, not bad. Okay, I'm going to pop my last two rare candies here. And I'm going to full restore. And I'm just going to go ahead and pop a max elixir because I can. And it's time for the champion, guys. It's got six Pokemon. Alakazam is really fast. We're probably going to have to get some luck there. I, I don't think we outspeed, so I think we're going to have to uh, Thunder Wave and then try to take it down. But, I mean, everything else, we should outspeed, so then it's just a matter of can we, can we get the one hits to knock them out. So let's get into the champion. Let's see how many attempts this takes. Oh my god. So here... First things first, I think we have to take down this Sand Slash quickly. Because <laughs> we can see it does a lot of damage. But let's just keep going with this. Okay. 
it shouldn't matter which move we use because everything is basically the same here, but we outspeed Alakazam. Okay. Okay, we land the fissure. Good. Come on. Here, he doesn't use anything really strong with Exeggutor, so I think I can just soft boil it there. Okay, we horn drill. Oh, but we get paralyzed here. No, and then he statused me. He used Screech, so that lowered my speed enough that I couldn't hit anymore. So that's just an auto reset there. Okay, one shot there. Very good. Oh, he thunder waves. Oh, and then he screeches, so we can't do anything there. At that point, it's just GG because of the glitch where him using that move results in us not being able to, or results in our speed going down even more. Oh, but here, three fissures land in a row. Oh, there's a fourth fissure. Yes. Yes, fifth fissure. Okay, can we take down this Flareon? It's using fire spin. Okay. Okay, we have to switch to Horn Drill. Oh, and he knocks me out. No, I should have healed. I should have healed. <laughs> oh, God. Why? That was such a good run, getting all the way to the Flareon. Okay, Horn Drill hits. Horn Drill hits. Come on, Horn Drill hits. Yes. Horn Drill hits. Yes. Horn drill hits. Okay. We're all the way to the Flareon with 8 PP and Fissure hits. There we go, boys. Oh my God. We take down VGC. 82 resets. And we added four TMs technically because we added Horn drill, Fissure, Soft Boiled, and Thunder Wave. This is basically the same thing as HM Mule, right? But this is way, way different than HM Mule. Because here on zero DVs and minimum battles, the only spot, the only spot that we reached in the entire run where it was like we have to use rare candies in order to outspeed an opponent was Giovanni's Doug Trio. Like that is incredible to me that Giovanni's Doug Trio would be the only spot in the entire run where Mew was actually not fast enough to outspeed its opponent or use Thunder Wave in order to get through in the case where it didn't outspeed. And to do this in the under 100 resets, when you guys have seen some terrible, terrible runs on this channel, I mean, this, this is an A tier. Like, that's a what? Um, 12.2 points off of the tier list, so that's... I get such a kick out of this, like, I, I don't know if anybody else cares, but for me, this is so much fun to see situations like this where just playing the playing the game in the stupidest possible way results in something. So One hit KO moves are better than HM moves. That is the answer, guys. So as, you know, random as you might think they are, they're not really that inconsistent at the end of the day. Yes, you're going to have some resets. Yes, there's going to be luck, but I mean, don't get me wrong. We could probably do this again and end up with like way more resets or way fewer resets just depending on the luck rolls. But it's really just when you get to those five, six Pokemon teams that suddenly that strategy becomes difficult. But man, we got this. So that was really cool. And now there's only one question left, of course. It's my question at least don't know about you guys but uh ko kitty it's time to uh go ko another kitty all right so we're gonna go into the mew fight here or the mewtwo fight here love rip you know in the pokemon anime mewtwo's only possible defeat with mew and then in the actual game, Mewtwo is just so much stronger than Mew, it's ridiculous, but... Here, I think we have the advantage. Because we can Thunder Wave and then just go into our one-hit KO moves. And this is gonna be finished. Oh, man. <laughs> I, 
I'm just enjoying myself. I hope you guys are enjoying yourselves. This will be edited at some point, but for now, who cares? Let's just get this up on the channel. And just have it there because this is so stupid. Okay. So here we are. We are just about to get to Mewtwo. Yes, I could pick up some more PP ups in here. I don't think I need them. I'm just going to get into this fight. So here against Mewtwo, I'm leading off with Thunder Wave, of course, and then Fissure. G to the G. Absolute legend on minimal battles. <laughs> anyway, see you in the next one, guys. Later.